Welcome to this segment of Arts Talk. I'm Sherry Burr, and we're going to have a special episode dedicated to the work of Vivian Vance, who was an Albuquerque resident and is well known as Ethel Mertz, the sidekick of Lucy from I Love Lucy. Joining us today are Luann Graham, who is Vivian Vance's sister, is Vivian Vance's sister. Welcome, Luann Graham. I have a lot of sisters <laughs> that were, too. Yes. <laughs> Thank and you. Also joining us is Deborah Slaney, who's the curator at the Albuquerque Museum of the Vivian Vance exhibit. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, it's lovely to have you two ladies here. Um, and. Deb, let's start with you and tell us how you came to work with Luann to curate this exhibit. Well, we always thought that an, an exhibition on Vivian Vance was a lovely idea. And a couple of years ago, Luann and a few friends of hers came to the museum and pitched us the idea, and we thought it was a wonderful idea. So we be began collaborating with Luann to develop the exhibit, which runs in our South Gallery through uh, January of 2015. That's wonderful. So. Let's uh, talk about your connection to Vivian. She was your sister, and where do you both fit in the lineup of family members? We were a family of six children. I'm the youngest. Vivian is the next oldest. It was five girls and a boy, mm -hmm. and the boy was just above me, mm -hmm. and he's still here. He's in Albuquerque, my brother, but all my sisters are gone, and uh, I had five mothers. Ah, your sisters and your mother. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, Vivian was um, a legend, um, having been one of the most highly regarded comics of all time. And just about everybody has seen an I Love Lucy episode uh, with her. Do you have a favorite episode? Oh, I suppose the chocolate factor. I think the that's one that lots of people yeah. like. Yes. But uh, it'd be hard to choose, actually. Yes. There was yes. One. And we have one of the images here um, that the audience will see of Vivian with her pearls. Uh, can you tell us about that's this That's probably image? the oldest film oh, that we have a picture of her. Mm -hmm. That's in Kansas, actually, where mm -hmm. she was running for Miss Kansas. Oh. Because we were all born in Kansas. And Vivian and my oldest sister went to high school there, but I moved her when I was two, so I'm an Albuquerque and I'm proud of it. Yes. And when she came and joined the family when we moved here, because she left home before we moved, uh, when she finished uh, Independence High School, she went to a show in Tulsa, Oklahoma, south of there. And then my, we moved the other four children and my oldest sister had already married and moved. We're 20 years apart from my oldest sister. We're all spread out. And when Vivian came here then from Oklahoma to Albuquerque, she fell in love with New Mexico, as we all did, and ever told everybody from then on that she was from Albuquerque. Oh. And there's even a, a special episode of I Love Lucy called Ethel's Hometown, yeah. and it focuses on Albuquerque. Yes, but was filmed in California, of course. Oh, but uh, and, uh, and actually, my that's uh, those were Ethel P Potter's parents. My parents are so different from that film, and the, especially the fun. Our father was a terrific man, a very handsome man, uh, and I was glad I was Ethel's parents instead of my parents. But I'm glad she chose Albuquerque. She often did that. Uh, the other, I mean, put things into Albuquerque. They were allowed to give names. She also used, all through the showing, our names as people. I'd hear, I'd hear all of a sudden, well, I'm going to ask Luann to come, or Venus, or Dorothy, or Mickey. She'd use our names uh, in, on the shows. Wow. wow. <laughs> and uh, Deb, you have this image at the exhibit. What attracted you to wanting to show this image? Um, it, 
in addition to it being an absolutely beautiful image that shows a different side of her than we see in the, in the I Love Lucy shows and the later shows, uh, we wanted to show this image because we also have it in our photograph archives oh, you here do. at the museum. It's mm -hmm. one of two absolutely beautiful photographs we have that are attributed to the Brooks Studio oh. here in Albuquerque, leading us to think that there is a possibility that it was shot locally and then used in Kansas. Uh, oh, I see. And, um, and in addition to that, we have photographs of the Albuquerque Little Theater and also some of the plays that were performed. Oh, that's wonderful. I imagine, I, I, I don't know the truth of this, but I imagine she brought that with her when she uh, just does a showing of one of her photographs. Oh, I see. Because that's been in the family since I can remember, and I ended up with it, I don't know. Okay. I, but I've always had it. My, um, for t one of my uh, uh, filmmakers really liked the image because of the soft focus. It's a stunning image, just very well done on the part of the, the photographer. photographer. There's another image. Um, uh, can you tell us about this image? And this, I was in, I, when I made up a scrapbook, I found this, and I don't even know where it was, but that's my oldest sister, Venus, we, who we call Mimi because she hated that name and Vivian when they were kids and long before I came along because okay. uh, Venus is 20 years older than me and Vivian 17. Mm -hmm. But I love the picture. And in the exhibit, did you try to do like a chronological retelling of Vivian's life through pictures? We certainly did. Um, another thing that was extremely important to us and, and is for all exhibits that we do at the Albuquerque Museum is to present the first person. So we not only presented the history and the chronology, but we also used the voices of Luann Graham and of Vivian and other family members um, who are actually telling the story in the text. And this photo, including the one with my father and mother and Venus, mm -hmm. Uh, came to me and I have the original, she has the originals, mm -hmm. which I think is, I know it's very important to the museum. Right, yes, that's great. The next image? That's at the Chemo stage door on 5th Street when she was in Cushman's Review, which was a vaudeville show, mm -hmm. and when she came here, of course, she she saw that going on and went and tried out, and they, of course, they took her immediately because she's a, she's a wonderful singer. And when I was about four, okay, uh, my one of my sisters took me to the show, and I went backstage after seeing her sing. I remember she sang "My Man." That was the thing they loved best. Mm. And I saw that dressing room and fell in love with it, mm. <laughs> and was yeah. so proud of her. We think of Vivian as a primarily as a comic actress, oh, a comedian. Is. Do you also think of her as a dramatic actress and as a singer? Well, I've seen her do dramatic shows. Mm -hmm. She was an all-around good actress. The first thing she did for the little theater, you know, the little theater, of course, sent her to New York, and then she acted in New York for 15 years. It was the first thing I saw her do at the little theater was Anna Christie, mm -hmm. and that's a very serious show. But she did, I remember being very proud of her, but, and she did, but when she did, uh, stage shows, she did mostly comedies and mostly musical comedies. And then she toured uh, in summer theater all the time. She was working in television. And mostly she, of course, just did choose comedies. She's a natural comic. That's why she and Lucy are so good together. Mm -hmm. Lucy, of course, didn't know she was a natural comic for years. Oh, really? No, she was a glamour girl and she modeled for. Uh, uh, she modeled in New York. She didn't act. You know. Oh, Lucy. Oh, okay. Lucy started out as a model. We just went right into theater. And, mm -hmm. and one of the things that's so interesting is how slender Vivian was in real life. And I saw an exhibit when um, they did the 100th anniversary celebration of her birth, and they had these really thin size, you know, size six, size four gowns. I produced that. Oh, you did? At the key. Yeah, that was wonderful. So she was very thin. And I read somewhere that Lucy had wanted her to look less glamorous for the show, that she wanted her to frump up a little bit. Yes, she, she wanted a, a frumpy housewife, but mm -hmm. the woman she wanted was working in another series. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, and they were looking for Ethel Mertz and one of Vivian's former directors said to Desi, you've got to go down to the La Jolla Playhouse. Vivian Vance is performing down there and see her. And and after they did, they went down to see it. He went backstage and offered her the role. Oh. And so when he got back, and then when Vivian appeared, uh, Lucy wasn't very happy about it. Oh. Because she was obviously oh. a glamorous right. person. Right. So Desi so she offered made her, her get, the role She made her add pounds, for oh, one really? thing. So did she physically gain pounds, or was it no, movie no, pounds? she gained 20 pounds. Oh, she gained 20 pounds for the role. Mm -hmm. Wow. But Desi hired her without talking to Lucy about it first. And that was a mistake. Yes. <laughs> yes. Lucy liked to make the mistakes. But it didn't take long for her to find out how valuable Vivian was to her. Mm -hmm. And through their life, working together, of course, uh, she wanted Vivian to go on after the Lucy show, which was the second one they did. And Vivian was very tired by then and newly married, and, and she wouldn't. And I feel myself, and as talented as Lucy is, she needed the other, she needed Vivian. Right. Viv was so good at reactions, mm -hmm. and uh, that was kind of her role, you know. The, yeah, they were the perfect partners. Oh, yes. yes. And they, they, they were raised similarly in small towns. Mm -hmm. They were both ambitious. Uh, they were willing to do anything. I mean, and so it, it just became a magic group to work mm -hmm. together with them. They just, they had the same sense of timing. Mm -hmm. I remember one episode where um, Fred uh, Ethel's husband comes into the room and Fred asks, who's on the phone? Vivian's obvious, Ethel's on the phone. And Ethel says, it's Lucy and she's in trouble. And Fred says, quick, hang up. Um, <laughs> so uh, can you talk a little bit about the relationship between uh, Vivian's stage husband? Well, the, Fred? well, they had these marvelous writers. You do know that was the perfect thing. Uh, that was actually kind of the running theme, I think, that trying to keep for Lucy from doing something silly, I think that was a theme that ran out throughout the show myself. Yeah. Yes. And Vivian suffering for it. Right. I have a film that I, it has that thing where they're talking about the front of the donkey and the back of the donkey, and of course, mm -hmm. uh, Lucy insisted on being the head, and they argued about that. And that was all built into the scripts. Okay. And Let's, we're going to pause for a second. Let me just stop you. And we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back. Okay, thank you. Thank you, the audience. Just hold on, and we'll be back in a few seconds. Thank you.